Wondering where the Windows Startup folder is or how to use it effectively? This is Ben with MakeUseOf.com, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Windows Startup folder effectively, along with a few tricks for managing it. Now the first thing we need to talk about is what the Windows Startup folder is, and it's pretty simple. All the Startup folder is, is a special location on your computer that anything you put in there, Windows will run as soon as you boot up your computer. Now there are actually two Startup folders on your computer. They're kind of buried in the file system, but Windows includes a couple of shortcuts we can use to access them. So if you open up a file Explorer window, or just press Windows key and R to open up Run, either one works. Just go ahead and type shell colon startup, all one uh, phrase with no spaces, and hit enter. And you'll jump right to your startup folder, which again is buried, so this is the easier way. Anything that you see in here is going to automatically run at startup. Depending on how new your computer is and what software you have installed, you may already have a few programs here. These will run uh, when the computer starts up, so as you can see, uh, I have an autocorrect script running as well as my VPN service. Now, if you want to access the startup folder for everybody on your computer, type in shell common startup, so there's no space between the colon and common, but there is a space between common and startup. When you open this folder, you'll see the startup folder for everybody, so anything in here will automatically run for all users on your computer. So these are two uh, easy folders to access, but what if you want to add uh, your own startup? program to them. Well, it's pretty easy. Note that most software does have an option in its preferences that there's just a checkbox that says run at startup. So you should look at your program's options before you do this because that's an easier way. But if you're using a piece of software that doesn't have that option, you can make your own shortcut. So what you want to do is you want to first find the program you want to create a shortcut for. In this case, we'll do Firefox. So start typing uh, Firefox or whatever you want to do in your Windows Start menu, and then right click its icon. Choose Send To and then Desktop Create Shortcut, and that will send a shortcut icon for that program onto your desktop. I already have one here. And then all you have to do is drag and drop that icon into the Startup folder, or cut and paste it. In this case, whoops. In this case, we'll press Control X to cut, and then Control V to paste, and then just provide administrator permissions to copy to that folder, and you'll see the Firefox icon in there. Now, the reason we use a shortcut for this is so that you don't have to move the actual uh, installation file, the normal executable, and if you ever decide you don't want Firefox running at startup, you can just delete this icon and you don't have to worry about replacing the original executable. So I'm going to delete this just for now. And that's how you manually add a program to startup. Now that's, you can do it this way, but there's a more powerful way to do it, and that's through the Windows Task Manager. So to open the Task Manager, you can press Control, Shift, Escape on your keyboard, or right click on the taskbar and choose Task Manager. Once it's open, if you see a basic window like this, just click on More Details, and then choose the Startup tab. Now here you're going to see all the programs that are set to automatically run on your computer, and you get a couple of key details about them. You can sort by name, obviously, uh, but you can also sort by startup impact, which shows you uh, how much uh, impact that has on your computer. So something that's high is going to take longer and use more energy, something that's low is going to be pretty minimal, and there's also a lot of programs you'll see that are none or not measured. So here you can go through, and if there's any software on here that you don't really use, uh, you can click on it, and then just click the Disable button in the corner to prevent it from running at startup. Um, some software, you can read more about this in the linked article, but some software you should always have running at startup. Uh, your backup software is important so that you don't have to remember to backup manually. Um, your antivirus software, so that you don't, I mean, obviously you want that running at all times. Um, and then any software you use normally, so like Ditto is a clipboard manager, I don't want to have to remember to start that every time uh, I open up my computer so I have that running automatically. Um, so that's that, and then some programs you shouldn't uh, have running at startup, you don't really need any kind of like game or media software, so you don't need like iTunes or Discord or Steam, unless you use those all the time, uh, the, the draw they take when you boot your computer up is not worth having them run at startup, so just open them when you need to. I mean, you don't need things like Adobe Reader Helper or Spotify Web Helper, that, that is unnecessary as well, so you can disable those. And then, real quick while you're in here, if you right-click up on this header bar along name, you can add a couple of additional 
bits of information to the task manager. So in addition to startup impact and startup type, uh, you can choose uh, command line, which will show you where the program is located. And this startup type field will tell you registry or folder. If it says registry, the program probably set itself to run its startup when you installed it, or you uh, checked a box that says, let this run its startup. If it's folder, then there's a shortcut for it, I and mean, either of the folders we talked about earlier. And that is basically all you need to know about the Windows startup folder. So it's important to know what's running at startup on your computer, because uh, the more that's running, obviously, the higher of a draw it has on your system. So we recommend going through and disabling anything that you don't use normally so that it reduces that draw on your computer and then enable things that you do actually use for more convenience for you. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to Make Use Of's YouTube channel for more uh, tips like this as, long, as well as reviews of the latest tech and we'll see you in the next video.